Welcome back to the Red Dice Diaries. This is John with another GM Tips video. And DM Lord Spencer requested a video where I gave some advice on how the tips and suggestions in my Making Monsters Monstrous video, which I'll put a link to down below in the description, could be applied to common undead, monsters that he needs more than one of in his campaign. Now, during this, I'm also going to be using the companion questionnaire published on my website. And again, I'll put a link to that down below. So, before we get into talking about how the guidelines I gave can be adapted to use with the undead, I talked in my Monsters Monstrous video about the problem of overexposure causing players to become jaded towards monsters. Now, there are a few places where this is more prevalent than with the mindless undead, zombies and skeletons. <laughs> There are so many zombie films and books out there that deal with the traditional methods of their creation that the concept seems almost as dry and dusty as the dehydrated corpses themselves. This isn't to say that you can't make them interesting again, it's just that it's going to be a little bit harder. Try to find an explanation for the existence of these creatures that isn't just someone casting a Create Undead spell or something similar. Also, broaden your views of what exactly a zombie is. They don't have to be simply the shambling corpse of a dead person raised by magic, as per the D&D Monster Manual. Anything that is compelled by a will other than their own, and that seems almost mindless, or acting only on instinct if you want feral zombies, can be seen as a zombie. Another problem with these creatures when used in roleplay is that in films and books a lot of the horror comes from normal people trying to survive against unstoppable hordes of the creatures. However, normally roleplay characters are far more capable than most normal people with far greater powers and abilities. Also, having certain death as the inevitable end of a campaign doesn't tend to be particularly enjoyable in most situations and this can result in a lot of the horror being removed from the situation. Okay then, so for a single monster or abomination, we'd be looking to answer the following questions. How was the monster created? If a divinity or higher power was involved in the creation, what was the nature of the power involved? If it was created as a result of a curse, then why was the curse inflicted? And if it wasn't created for a curse, what purpose was the monster created for? Now originally I created these guidelines for individual monsters in the style of Greco-Roman mythology, but with a little thought they can be adapted for creatures that appear in larger numbers, such as the undead. Now I'm going to take you through the process of me creating a few different types of undead horde using the guidelines above as examples to show you what I mean. And in each case I want to avoid having the usual necromancer or lich as an explanation, but still provide justification for having a large horde of such creatures as per Spencer's request. So, Undead Horde 1 is titled The Dead God. It was created when, in a time of legend, the God of Thieves attempted to usurp the power of his fellow gods, stealing it and making him the only supreme divinity. He was stopped and the gods sought to punish him. Knowing they could not kill another god, they instead shattered his body and scattered his soul to the four winds. The god of the sea took the broken soul of the thief and scattered them throughout the deepest regions of his domain, and the other gods forgot about him. However, the thief god was not so easily destroyed. So what is the purpose of the horde? Well, the remnants of the thief god's soul lay in wait, gathering their strength until suitable vessels came within reach, which they did with a shipwreck where all hands were lost. Stealing into the bodies of the drowned, dead limbs began to march towards the shore, heedless of the great pressure of the depths of the water about them. Behind the dull dead eyes of the dead men looked the broken mind of the thief god, determined to locate the rest of his essence and reclaim his divinity. Now the horde roam the land, their essence stealing into anyone they kill and swiftly raising them to join their silent ranks. The thief god seems to take particular delight in killing devout worshippers of the gods who betrayed him, but is most quickly lured by rumours of any artefacts that may contain the missing parts of his divine essence. Although a horde, the dead move as many parts of a single body, all possessed of a shared, if insane, intelligence. Undead Horde 2 is titled The Sleeping Curse, and it was created when, in a faraway kingdom, a great sorcerer king used his powers to steal precious jewels and items of enchantment from the realm of dreams and bring them into the waking world, making his kingdom one of the greatest in the land and his people the most wealthy. 
Gradually, the people became so decadent and cruel with their richness that their actions drew the angry attention of the dream god. The god of dreams was angry that someone had transgressed the natural laws, stealing from his nighttime realm, and thus he cursed the citizens of the kingdom, throwing them into a deep sleep from which they would know no release until the various artifacts that they had stolen from his realm, and subsequently traded away, were returned. The purpose of the Horde is that the sleepwalking bodies of the citizens roam the land instinctively seeking the artefacts that will release them from their state of living death. Touched by the land of dreams, they appear shrouded in a choking sandstorm of dream stuff that can cause the unprepared to fall into a deep dreamless sleep. There are many legends in the world of traders coming across wonderful artefacts of bizarre design and colour buried in the desert sand, only for those around them to fall into a heavy slumber a short time later, and awaken to discover the artefact and the merchant in question gone. The only clues to their whereabouts being piles of strange sand and dragging footfalls that eventually disappear into nothingness. And our final Undead Horde, Undead Horde 3, is titled Zombie Fungus, and it was created when a long time ago a mighty mystic succeeded at trapping the God of Death, threatening to keep him imprisoned for eternity unless the great God agreed to make him immortal. With the mortal world thrown into chaos by its absence, the God of Death agreed and, in a manner of speaking, granted the mystic's request. The purpose of the Horde was, with the aid of his brother god, the Lord of Decay and Rot, the mystic was cursed by death and transformed into a pulsating mass of fungus that remained inanimate and regenerated itself, making him effectively immortal, but also horrifically aware of his state of being. Having been touched by the hand of death, though, the mystic eventually discovered that through his spores, he could infiltrate and control the bodies of the living, although his poisonous spores meant death and zombification of the body after a short time. The mystic now seeks other powers, always looking for one that can restore him to his former glory. Wherever his creatures go, controlled by his fungal intelligence until eventually they fall to pieces, bursting forth new spores from their fallen bodies, they are accompanied by damp and rot. The mystic has secretly begun to wonder whether his current state is part of some greater plan by the God of Decay. So there you have it, there are three sample undead hordes, each providing justification for having a large mass of undead skeletons or zombies roaming the world, and neither of them relying on the standard necromancer, lich, or evil sorcerer casting rays undead for their existence. So I think that's the main point I would push forward when it comes to using the guidelines to bring a bit more interest to undead and creatures like that that are quite overused. Try and put a bit of a different spin on them, creating a bit more of an interesting background rather than someone just simply casting a spell over a battlefield or something like that. Well, I hope if you've enjoyed this video, you'll consider clicking on like and clicking on the red dice to subscribe to my channel. We put out new videos every week. If you have any comments on this video, please put them in the comments box below. Or as always, hit me up in the Google Plus links. Until I see you next time, thank you very much for listening and for watching. Take care.